lay go. One friend, preferably someone sitting next to you, and then take turns. Share what you're greeting. It's called a pair method. So let's go. One, two, go. Fundamentals. So I have uh, ten 
of the major observations that I want to share with us this morning. And I'll just talk briefly about them. Now, she, the first discovery was she realized that early stimulation is important for children. And what does she mean by this? We need to, you know, ensure that children get stimulated by the use of their senses. And that children learn better, even adults, learn better when we make the best use of our senses. And that's why in the Montessori method of education, what we do basically is children having a touch, a feel, they listen, they taste, they look, they relate with the materials to deduce learning. Another observation she made was that children learn from active hands-on approach that draws on the five senses. I think I've said that already. She also observed that the learning material should be designed to the size of the child. So for example, in the Montessori class, this is not ideal for a child. Every of the material must be what? Must be what? Child-sized. I mean, I have very... I think I should just drop the mic and run and do this. <laughs> and then this is how wonderful participants. Okay? So... We all have the understanding that all the materials have to be what? Child sized. And they should be in such a way that there is no form of anything that can injure the child. All materials that are not properly done should not be used by the child. It must be properly done so that safety is taken into consideration. Then she also talked about the fact that she discovered that real learning is the ability to do things for oneself, not the passive reception of knowledge. Real learning takes place when you are able to do something for yourself, not just showing things at the children. So if you notice, I made all of us chair, okay? I made us move around, and we're beginning to gain some experiences. So for some of us, it's not just about what I'm saying in this hall. You have learned, you have learned one or two things to make your entire class interactive. You have learned one or two things to ensure that you get better at what you do as an educator. The same thing for the children in the Montessori class. It is not just about calling the child A, say A after B, say B, when they can actually feel using the word. Huh? The fantastic, the sandpaper, or the large movable oh, fat. You guys are exciting. Okay, so another thing she also uh, talked about was that we shouldn't impose. We should impose immobi immobility and silence. Shut up! Keep quiet! <laughs> okay? Now, the child naturally loves silence. When the child is engaged in an activity that the child does what? Eh? Yes, takes interest in. And that is why we are so passionate about it. Unfortunately, most of us have, even some of us grew up, yeah, shut up, shut up, shut up. So to talk in front of a crowd like this is difficult. And we can't afford to do that to the children we are raising now. You can imagine a gift like me. If I don't, I don't know how to fight it and come out. I'm just shaking in front of you this morning. Would you have loved it? Would you have loved it? So you see why it's so important that we take on this method of teaching this philosophy. So she discovered that the child's interest, once the child picks an activity that is interested in, silence is what? Silence is normal. It becomes automatic because the child has the interest in that material. And not just that silence is automatic, the movement brings about order. Sorry. 
the movement brings about order and a sense of um, a sense of direction for the child. So these are the discoveries she made while she was, she was with these six two children, all alone by herself. Okay? So another thing she also observed is about discipline. You know, most of us in our traditional schools, we feel that, oh, we have to impose, sometimes physically abuse the children, beat them. Well, it's not our fault because we didn't know better. We were raised that way. We, I mean, for someone like me, I had a kid in the room, I had another one in the city room, my mom, because my mom is also a teacher. So she had one in the city room, one in the kitchen, one. <laughs> so if you miss me here, she doesn't have to go too far. There is always one around the corner. <laughs> but you know, why would the story observe that every child is naturally disciplined? Yes. If the child has been raised in such a way that is given freedom of choice from growing up, so it is not whether you like it or not, hey, you must do this thing. Because the child is naturally curious. He wants to know. As you said concerning this um, um, philosophy that a child's cry is to help me to help myself. Help me to help myself. So she was able to discover some concepts. Normalization, the absorbent mind, the sensitive period. Which other one? I've mentioned some of the major well, control of error, beautiful. I'm loving this. Any other Montessori concept? Let's share, let's share. Sorry? Visual. <laughs> but yes, you're still on point, kind of. My class, no wrong about the right answer. You share your opinion. Prepared environment, fantastic. In fact, Montessori said, the life of a child in the Montessori environment is like a triangle. So everybody, can you draw a triangle? So for those of us that are very um, used to it, so what's the first point of the triangle? Is the what? The first point of the triangle in the Montessori system. Is the what? Yeah? Is the what? The top. So the top is what? What will be there? Child. And then you come down this way, we have the teacher, and then we go this way, we have the prepared environment. Okay, next slide. So, with all that I've said, I want us to talk to our neighbors again. We've gotten the foundation knowledge. Why are we here for those two days? The overview of the reason why we are all here. We want to have a better way of communicating to our children. We want them to take on this method to be the best in the, in the classroom. To stand out. To stand out as a 21st century child using the Montessori method. So you are going to be discussing with your neighbor now. How do you intend improving on the teaching method in your classroom based on your new knowledge on Montessori? From the few things I've said. From the few things I've said, it's important we reflect. Is it that you want to make sure you reduce on the on the what? The cane? <laughs> or for someone else, it could be that you want to really learn deeper on how this method really works. For someone else, it could be the aspect of giving children freedom with limits. Okay? Alright? Alright? So I'm just giving you ideas. So write it down now. How do you intend to use this new knowledge? Because most of us, we go for conferences, we leave the book. We don't act. And until you act on the things you hear, you won't get the desired result. So at least let's reflect. You must write something down. You must write something down. 
with this new knowledge, you must do something significant. The next slide. Okay, ma'am, please can you hand share with us? Well, my name is here. And I have a school called Solis International School. And for me, this is a new thing to do because ours is not a Montessori school. So the best thing to do is to learn more about this Montessori and how we are going to apply it to the school. Because if I look at my school, I think we are doing something close to Montessori. Because the we do not kill the children and we relate to the children so they are like our little friends. So we learn more about it and then we apply it every day in the school. Let's give her a round of applause. One more question. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, so you have the last question. Thank you. Okay, okay. She also needs a teacher's voice. Thank you. Oh, some people said it. Thank you. I'm saying that. Most of our schools, before timetable, that we need to follow as a teacher. With this concept, having a child's interest at hand, how I'm going to use uh, the timetable given to help the child is, it is something, it's something else. And I think with this knowledge I've acquired now, I am going to uh, help my son to come out with. Having a child's interest at hand, the child can come from the house, it's not in the mood to do maths, which is on the timetable. So I'll make sure the classroom is set up in such a way that I'll have the child's interest at hand. Thank you. I can get some uh, feedback. Uh, yeah, I 
Fashion Center. You could make it so welcoming that even if the child is not interested in whatever subject or whatever lesson you have to put out there. For instance, let's say, okay, we come to class and like, hey girl, today we're going to do literacy. You know very well that the child is not interested in literacy. So we are doing literacy. What do you want to do, Adriel? I want to do literacy. Okay. You simply the child at distance from what the others are doing. And you make sure that you have some kind of concentration on that child who has separated the self in doing numeracy. So whilst you're doing literacy, you make it more fun. You realize that at a point in time, the child that is doing literacy, sorry, the child that is doing numeracy will come to you and will be like, okay, auntie, because normally we call us auntie. So auntie, please, I want to do literacy. Okay, so if you want to do literacy, do you know what I'll do for you? I'll say do literacy, Adriel. Um, okay, I'll give you a big hug. So quickly, Adriel will come. Okay, Adriel, write the letter M for me. And let's color it nicely. After the child does that, then you keep the child the sense of touch, which is the heart. And trust me, with that, they will start developing some interest in literacy. Because that child will be like, Anytime I'm being able to do this, that's just going to give me a big hug. And trust me, you will bring that interest in the child. Thank you. Okay, so um, the last person, because of our time, other speakers are waiting. I have to round up my session. Why is she just waiting behind her? My name is Christina, and I'm from DPSI, Ghana. And what I'd like to say about discipline is that if you give the children job chat, if you have a chat and you assign every child every week, the child will be disciplined. They will come to school and they will be interested to come to school. They will come to school and they will know that today I'm the class monitor. Tomorrow or next week I'll be the lights monitor or maybe the books monitor. It will make the children more interested to come to school. Thank you. And so the last person for the day. And the that some of the school they have timetable and they have to do corresponding. It was all writing that will allow you. And then we what one of my students said, if you want to learn literacy and then the child wants to do it, it's not every child that will go by your tricks. So the only thing you do is just to make the class fun. If you are teaching and the child is not interested, you have to teach the way that the child will be interested. You have to teach how they learn. If they are learning it through jumping and you are teaching, you have to jump as well. That's all. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, so we're going to be wrong for being a fantastic audience. Thank you.